Well, hello again. I thought I'd bring you out here while I harvest some uh, greens to show you the last walk of onions I planted. Look how high they are. And I just stuck them down in that little pot. So if you have walk of onions, you can plant them anytime. I mean, they'll live now until cold weather, then they'll die back and uh, come back up next year. And there's a pot of the walking onions I planted. See how tall they are? They're up a ways. And then I've got one over here that I did. Right there. See how they're come up? And then I've got my buckets out here that I planted. I've got two buckets of walking onions. And look at those, how they've come up. Every single one of them haven't come up yet, but most of them have. We just need some rain. <laughs> but, yeah, I wanted to come out here and harvest some greens. See how my Swiss chard? It's really pretty, isn't it? My peppers right here are doing okay. And I got a squash right there. I think that's a squash. I'm not sure. <laughs> I gave up with marking it. I said, I'm not marking them this time. It takes too much time and aggravation, so. I'll get back here with my bowl. Because this is the gift that keeps on giving. You, you harvest it. And it's like eating spinach or any other green. cooks up pretty good and then it puts out more leaves I mean you can cut it now every bit of it and come back in a few days and harvest it again We've got Swiss chard and kale buds planted here. And I put more Swiss chard out in some of my other pots too as for seed. And they should be coming up pretty soon. But I'll include this with my dinner tonight. <laughs> Let's see off those just a few little plants. I got quite a few leaves. And if they don't look good, just cut them and drop them back down in your pot and they act as fertilizer for the rest of them. But there's a big one on this. See off of those two dish pans of um, plants. I got that meant that much Swiss chard already, or greens. It's Swiss chard and uh, and I could come over here and harvest some of my cabbages to go with them. I need to plant something else in that one. One of the cabbages died.
but I'll have a big pot of greens here. <laughs> Enough to eat for several days. And I try to qu cook a pretty big batch of them at one time. Because that way I can take them out and just warm them up later for other meals. And I don't have to spend all that time cooking them every time. It's starting to head up. I should probably leave one and just see if it will. But I like eating the leaves too. I think I might leave that one and just see if it'll head up because it's trying to head up already. But I've got some here. I've kind of got it spread out <laughs> around the yard, really. That's just kind of the way it ended up. Brought me a bigger container. And I've got some right here. If I can see what I'm showing you. <laughs> see, you don't need a great big. Uh, pot to grow it in. This is just a little, basically a flower pot. And I threw a couple of plants in there. Just give it a good haircut and it'll do just like your hair. It'll grow back. It'll keep on giving you greens. <laughs> and these greens are good for you. You get a lot of vitamin C and stuff. And I see my basil here. Is um trying to go to seed. I don't want it to do that. So I just break the top off. It looks like it needs to be watered again. That little bit. All we got was a sprinkle last night. Didn't get enough rain to even wet the ground again. Then it's terrible. We've got to have some rain. Or nothing outside is going to survive. Well, there's one I missed. I don't want it to go to seed yet. I need to harvest some and dry it.
Let's see if I can get over on the other side. Rose bushes are there. <laughs> so I'll move the camera. And come over here and harvest this. But greens are healthy for you. They have a lot of vitamin C and other nutrients in them that your body needs. Not to mention they keep you regular. <laughs> Puts a lot of fiber in your system. Don't know what I'm showing you. Oh, let's see. <laughs> Can't see here what I'm showing you. Uh, maybe you can see it. I'm just going down here to these. And I planted a lot more seed for this Swiss chard and kale in my other pots for a fall garden because these do good in cold weather or cooler weather but they will survive the heat because this has been growing all summer But you can see, I guess I can show you here. I cannot tell what I'm showing you really. Well, yeah, you can see it. I've got Swiss chard coming up right there. And I planted some in this bucket and this one up here on top. And it's just started to come up. You can barely see it. I planted some here in the swimming pool in the center. Oh man. <laughs> and there's a little buddy. He had to come out here with me. I mean, he's been out. <laughs> he come by the door and got him something to eat and then he came back out. Yeah, but as soon as this weather cools off, so this stuff can grow, it's going to grow and thrive. So I can keep it watered real good. I mean, you give this stuff a good haircut, and it will grow back. So if you start three or four plants of it, if you're by yourself, it'll keep you in greens. Basically, all growing season. If you have more than one in your family, it'll still supply you in greens, maybe not quite as much. You may need to plant a few more. And I'm going to have to get out here and water today, too. See some of the stuff that I've planted in there is coming up. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, got to dump my bowl over. But you can see right here, the seeds are coming up. I'll leave the bowl over there because. I don't have anything down here to harvest yet. But I did put seeds out, so 
my seed should be coming up pretty soon. Like, see, I did put some uh, Swiss chard or kale down in here. You can see it coming up. Just barely coming up. And my basil is still alive back here. And I don't remember which one this is. I don't know if it's a melon of some kind, like a cantaloupe or honeydew. I think that's what I had planted in here to begin with. Or yellow, I don't think it's a yellow squash because it's running like a vine. Now this may be my yellow squash right here. But this one is a, a melon. I planted seeds in here, but it's not come up yet. We haven't had enough rain or water put on it to come up. You can see I've got Swiss chard coming up there, popping up out of the ground. So it should do something. And I've got a squash plant here. My peppers are still hanging on, and i got a squash there. That's not coming up yet. Really, they haven't had time to come up. And I planted, I don't know if it was squash or something in this thing. It'll surprise me when it comes up. And I don't know why this shark fin squash looks so funky. The other one looks kind of funky there. But this one, I don't know. Cut some of the leaves down off of it so maybe it won't pull all the water from the main plant and that might help it. Put that back in there for compost. But maybe it'll survive <laughs> since the temperatures are cooling off a tiny bit. I've replanted melon in that. I mean, I've replanted seeds in just about every spot out here. It just has not come up yet. It hasn't had enough water for them to germinate and come up. So we'll see what happens. I'll go ahead and cut that one off of there. Let it go down in this compost. <laughs> Just fall in the pot. Because <laughs> if you got bad leaves on there, they're not doing anything. Just cut them off. So the rest of the plant will get the water. And I think I planted Swiss chard and kale in these holes that were empty. But they're not come up yet. So... Little buddy, what do you think, huh? What do you think? Yeah, I'll always have onions now with these uh, Egyptian walking onions. You can pull up the whole onion on your oldest plants after they've produced your seed, seed onions. Replant your seed onions in different pots and you'll have more than you started out with and it'll always keep you in onions that way. You don't want to pull them up before they seed out, though. Ain't that right, little buddy? Huh? Ain't that right? Whew. I'm sweating, little buddy. I got sweat going in my eyes. I can't see what I'm doing. Oh. Yeah. <sighs> Oh, God, it, I can't see. I got sweat in my eyes. I got sweat in my eyes, little buddy. And all I did was walk around the garden. 
Yeah, all I did was walk around the garden. I wasn't even working out here. I just was cutting cutting some uh, greens to cook later today. And he's been in the bushes because he's got little soft stickers all over him. He's got a scratch on his ear where he's been fighting with some other cats. <laughs> we got some bad stray cats around here. That's why I quit feeding him outside because I'm not feeding all these other cats. They're not little buddy. <laughs> no, they're not. They're not little buddy. Yeah, he's got a scratch right there and a scratch on that one here. He's been in a fight with some, some cat around here. Some old stray. You got stickers on you. All up your tail. <laughs> they're not the sticker stickers. They're soft ones. They're like birds. I don't know what they call them, but he's got them all over him. Hold still. Come here. Come here. I just want to get the burr off your tail. I'm shedding like crazy. Yeah, he's shedding like crazy. He's shedding like crazy. So all them other stray cats, they're not like little buddy. <laughs> they're not little buddy, are they? I'm hot. I think I'm going to have to go inside and cool off. I might have to go in there and make me a cup of coffee to cool off or a cup of hot tea. I mean, once my mom told me that, you know, she said years ago, but if you're hot, just drink your hot cup of coffee or a hot cup of tea and it'll cool you off. There's a little buddy in the floor. He ain't no fool. He's going to lay there and cool his belly off. See him right there? And I may not get anything hot, but I am going to get something to drink. <laughs> oh, maybe some water. I still got the drill on the table. Cause I'm still wanting to get in there and start working on that uh, bedroom floor. <laughs> Ooh, I tell you, little buddy, it's hot, and I didn't have my mask on out there, and I've left my bowl of greens out there. Where did I leave them? I set them down. set them down right on the porch and brought the oh let me get a tissue gotta wipe my eye y'all <laughs> oh this sweat is burning my eyeballs <sighs> I know I need to sweat but I tell you what it's too hot out there to sweat. And it's way too hot. Whew. Oh my God. My hair is wet. And I didn't straighten the camera up. I thought I did. And it's sideways. By the time I get the camera straight, little buddy will get up and walk off. Whew. 
Gotta cool off. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get out there and water, but I'm not gonna do it this early. It's the middle of the day, it's too hot. But I wanted to get that kale cut, Swiss chard, before it got even hotter. At least it's halfway bearable out there right now. <sighs> and I went ahead and popped a couple of pumpkin seed in some of the pots out here right off the porch. I don't know if it'll do anything. It's just an experiment. See if it comes up this time of year and we'll actually produce a pumpkin before the first freeze. I don't know if it will or not. But we'll see. It's only a couple of seed gone if it doesn't work. But if it works, I'll know to go ahead and plant pumpkin seed the 1st of September next year. Whew. Little buddy, it is so hot. It is so hot. Now what I normally do is just bring my greens right over to my sink. Let's see if I can show you here. Pod gets in my way. And I know I may have showed you this before. But I'm going to show you again. Just going to dump my greens in there. Get me there, my little bowl to put my scraps in. Start running some cold water. I guess you can see what I'm doing. And you see that stem? I'm just going to reach right up here, about halfway the stem. I'm going to break it, peel the greens off of it, throw the stem away because that's hard to cook. And throw my, the rest of it in my colander to cook. This would be a job if you had a lot of people to cook for. I mean, back years ago when people had to, you know, survive off of what they grew, they had a lot of work to do. I mean, it was a lot of work to grow your, your vegetables, can your vegetables, because they didn't have a way to freeze it way back when. They had to can it in jars, you know, the glass canning jars.
See, I'm going to throw my cabbages right in there. Because cabbage leaves cook up just as good as the rest of it. And these stems are real good to put back in your compost. So I'll be throwing them out there in my compost bin. And everything else I throw in there. But if you bought this much greens in a little bag at the store, it cost you at least four, maybe close to five dollars for a bag of these, just this much, to cook one time. And when I can go out there and harvest my own and not have to buy them each time, why not do it? And I've got water going over here. I mean, I wouldn't want to have to solely live off of just what I could produce. I'd probably be the skinniest person in the world because I couldn't do all the work to produce all that food. But I enjoy my greens and my melons and stuff like that whenever I can grow them. These are usually things, like I said, you know, can stand the, the cold temperatures. They can stand the heat as long as they get plenty of water, which mine have not been getting plenty of water. Not with this water rationing. But they're still producing greens for me. So imagine if you live in an area with good soil that stays damp, uh, you got plenty of water, no restrictions. Oh my God, you should have a beautiful garden of greens. Not at all like mine. Putting it in the wrong bowl. And you know you're in the middle of a drought with no water when even the yard over your lateral lines, the grass is brown. Because there's no water in the ground, even over the lateral lines to keep plants alive, even grass. It evaporates too quickly. See the beauty of growing them in pots like this? 
when it does rain, you don't have a lot of dirt splashing up on your plants. That makes washing them even harder. I know I planted them in the ground one time, and oh my gosh, they grew beautifully. But I ended up with grass in them. And then when it did rain, it splattered dirt up on the leaves. And I said, well, I'll never do that again unless I have enough of mulch that I can put down or something to lay in between the plants to keep that dirt from washing up on them or splattering up on them. But this will give me grains to eat <laughs> every day, at least one serving every day for almost a week, just out of this one harvest. And you know, they do cook down to quite a small amount. so. Put it in the wrong bowl. I know I've got older videos. I know of harvesting my greens and cooking them in a meal and that type of thing. But sometimes people like to have a new video. So. That's the beauty of having a dishpan. <laughs> you can move your dishpan out of your sink and use your sink for washing your greens and stuff. Should have had it out already, or didn't. But I'm just getting my pressure pot, and I'm going to use the big one because it's the newer one, and it, and it kind of seems like it works better than the older one. Get 
the lid to it. I don't drop every pot in the kitchen. Now, like I said, you can either cut these up with your utility scissors. And sometimes I like to do that so I don't have to chop them as much after they get cooked, even though I do have a chopper. But they're easy to do. Just chop them up with your scissors. <laughs> now you might wonder, well, why are you putting them in your pressure pot? Usually you put them in a pan. That's because I got a lot of the cabbage leaves and the kale in here this time. And it takes just a little longer for that to cook. So in order to get it all cooked really good, I'm going to go ahead and put it in this pressure pot. But I don't put a lot of water in it. I mean, if you don't mind cooking them for a while, go ahead and put them in your frying pan. But I'm just going to do this number. But this is a great way to have greens to eat throughout the week and not have to cook them every single time. Just cook you a big pot at a time, put them in the refrigerator, or you can freeze them after they're cooked as well. But put them in your refrigerator and they'll last for a week in the refrigerator already cooked. All you got to do is take them out and heat them up. And one of these days I'm going to break bad and I will get started on that bedroom. <laughs> it's just been too hot. I mean, you just saw, I was out there just for a few minutes and not doing anything really but walking around and cutting this little bit of greens. And I was completely wet with sweat. So I, there's no, I mean, I'd be drowned with sweat if I was out there trying to run the saw, cutting wood and stuff to put down the floor. We just get out of the triple digits. I mean, we're back up in the triple digits this week. We've got a couple of days break of about 98 degree temperature, but now it's back over 100 again. But I will get late on out there later this evening and water my plants. See, I've got a pot full. <laughs> and I probably need to fix me some more uh, cabbage rolls. I haven't fixed cabbage rolls in a while.
And I'm sure you've got your own recipes and the way you cook your greens, but this is the way I do them. Especially if I have like collards or cabbage leaves in with them. If it was just the kale or the Swiss chard, it cooks up faster, so I would just put them in the frying pan and saute them. I'm glad I did get the big pot because I had I had my greens packed down in the colander. They were kind of squished down and it's giving me a big pot full of them. I need to catch that water. And I should have known better than to put that colander down just on the sink top. I had water dripping from the leaves through the colander holes going across my counter. That's not cool. <laughs> yeah, your greens are something your body needs. You eat your greens and you don't have to take fiber. You know, I, I, I take fiber a lot in the wintertime if I don't have greens or I don't get enough fiber in my diet because your body does need fiber. And your body needs the uh, nutrients that these greens give you when you eat them too, other than fiber. You say, well, it's just an old green. It's not worth anything. Well, oh, yes, it is. It's not green for nothing. That's that's money right there. <laughs> now I'm just going to put some water in here because you, you can't cook it without water. Now, I'm not seasoning these now. I'm putting my lid on. And I will cook them. Turn my burner on, get them hot, you know, so let them start cooking. And then we'll bring you back and I'll let you know how long I cooked them for. Well, I'm back, y'all. My greens have been cooking for about 45 minutes in my pressure pot. I've turned the, the burner off. I'm going to set them in the sink. And I'm going to run cold water on the lid. That helps cool the pressure down so I can take the lid off. Whenever there's no more steam coming out of the spout, and I've got a little latch under there, so I have to put the knife under there and release it to be able to take the lid off. Whoops! My little gasket fell in the pot. But, as you can see, my greens are cooked, and they're considerably less amount now than what was in there. <laughs> so I'm thinking, yeah, I may be able to just use a smaller bowl. Well, I'll use this one until I get them chopped up. Because I still will chop them up a little bit.
And if you had a ham bone or ham hock or something like that, you could have put it in your greens when you put them in there to cook them. I didn't have any on hand, so I didn't put them in there. Most of the time, I cook mine with nothing. Sometimes I put a little bit of bacon grease or bacon in there. I didn't even have the bacon this time, so I just cooked it by myself. At this point, if you cook bacon, you can pour a little bit of bacon grease in there. You can take some of your bacon and chop it up and put your bacon in there and mix it up. And you're good to go. Or if you like me and you try to watch what you're eating and try to do away with a lot of the grease, you don't have to add anything. You can just eat them like they are. Now, when my grandmother cooked them, my, my dad's mom, the one that lived on the farm, when she cooked collard greens or any type of greens, she'd always fix cornbread dumplings with them. I don't want to eat that much bread because I eat enough bread already. So I really don't want to fix cornbread dumplings. And the cornbread dumplings are better when you do have a ham hock or something like that in there. But if you want to eat greens to be healthy, you don't have to add anything to them. You can eat them just like you get them out of the pot. And I'm going to try to <coughs> drain some of this liquid off. Now, there was a many a time that I did fix my dumplings. Then I cooked them with a ham hock or a ham bone, and it's really good. But right now, I'm trying to be a little bit healthier, <laughs> so I don't want all that ham and stuff in there. And you can't see what I'm doing. I forget about this camera. But all I'm doing, I put all my greens back in the bowl, and I'm trying to get some of the liquid out. y'all there's your greens I mean you don't even need a chopper you can take this because they're so cooked right now I can just chop them with the uh, little metal tongs I've got that's how tender these greens are but you can see that one pot great big pot of greens made a, about a half a bowl of this size of greens and I, I'll, I'll store them in a smaller bowl I'm not I'm not gonna leave them in that, that big a bowl you know but there you go there's how to I've showed you how to plant your greens to grow your greens harvest your greens cook your greens and whatever you want to cook with your greens is up to you like I said you can um, instead of draining your juice off you can add uh, a little bit of uh, 
if you cooked it in a ham bone, you won't need any broth, but you can use the broth that's in the pot to cook a, a cornbread dumpling to go with your greens. Uh, if you didn't add a ham bone, you can put in like chicken bouillon, beef bouillon, or anything like that, and then cook your dumplings in that. And like I said, I'm not going to cook the dumplings because I don't want that much bread. Uh, I'm going to eat my greens with some chicken and some kind of vegetable for, for dinner tonight. So there we go. There is your uh, greens, y'all. <laughs> There goes your greens. Get happy. Eat some greens. And get healthy. Please like, share, and subscribe to my videos. Y'all have a blessed day. See you on my next one. Bye now.